Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again. It's a Saturday, and um, I am, uh, you know, for my face on every night, I use something called Pure Clay Cleanser. Now, I've tried all of, they have three different types of clays, uh, I mean, three different types of L'Oreal, and one of them is charcoal another one is a green color and actually to me the best one is the pure clay cleanser it's pretty affordable it's like under six bucks and I use it but I will say that it's not I use it before I use a cleanser I use it as I like a scrub because it's really coarse um, it is not if you have sensitive skin I would highly not recommend you use it because it's really harsh um, and it really does make your skin feel really good though. Um, and about when my daughter was really into using a lot of, um, uh, when I started getting more into using face cleansers and different things like, um, you know, doing, um, a lot more facial masks. Uh, so she was interested in doing it with me. And so Nordstrom for Christmas one year, I think she was four. So it was about three years ago. I started doing, um, I bought her like this small hand cream one. The small one from um, Nordstrom that I thought was kind of cute because they didn't have a kid's anything. And I thought it was pretty sensitive because it was made from eggs. And so I will say though, it comes, so it's called Egg Mellow Cream. It is such it's really pretty good I mean the cleanser is pretty good the cleanser is like a foam but the facial mask is really gooey gooey and it's really gooey and part of it is because it's made with eggs but it doesn't stink it doesn't smell so that's that's it's actually a very faint smell um now I haven't really talked a lot about she and moisture I think Shea Moisture is pretty good. Uh, I don't really like their hair care products. I've tried them on. They're, they're, they're okay. They're decent. I really don't like their gel. I think their gel is... Does not... It's... it's, it's um, it doesn't hold very well. Um, it's a little... Uh, it's... It's... It doesn't hold your hair down so if you're looking for something that actually actually hold your hair down that's not it um, and then so it's a lot more um, goo I don't want to say gooey but it's it's a lot more trying to do more moisturizing the hair which is fine instead of it trying to be a gel to keep your hair flat like that it doesn't it doesn't hold your hair into place at all so if that's what you're looking to hold your hair into place for for a style then shea moisture is not it uh the daily hydration body oil lotion is okay the only problem is is that it's so thick that these kind of containers see doesn't work it literally is just so thick that you know you hate to even throw it away um after a while because you know there's so much lotion in there, so you're going to have to cut it open to get it. And then you also need to use it very sparingly because put a little bit in your hand and wipe it on your skin and put it on your skin because uh, it does not seep into your skin very quickly. And so then it'll leave these white marks over on your clothes. I mean, it does go away and I get it, but it can be a little bit much and that's really not what you were anticipating. By the way, my Ivy box came, and so my cute little jacket, I hardly ever wear, AK, uh, you know, AKA gear, but I thought it'd be cool to wear it today because it's my Ivy box came. Now, since you have, you know, we all in this quarantine life have a bunch of kids at the house uh, and just ourselves and we're balancing trying to eat healthy, the Crate and Barrel, I have some of these before but crate and barrel um for mother's day i bought myself an even better container so this is like my fourth third or fourth one 
that I have in regards to sitting stuff around. So I highly recommend Crate and Barrel. The coolest thing is that you can kind of pick them up um, and put them around. And I usually put different fruit and then maybe a couple of snacks, maybe Ritz crackers or something to keep them away. And it also helps with minimizing Um, with it also does well with minimizing the amount of food control you know so that that's a, a really important thing in this quarantine life okay so review time so yesterday I said that I would watch the um, Jeff Epstein and then try to kind of compare this with my experience of watching R. Kelly well, I watched Jeff Epstein, and then I watched R. Kelly. I, it's getting kind of hot, so I'm not going to even sit here and talk about, I don't even want to even talk about it in my letters. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, okay, so R. Kelly. First off, there's more information about R. Kelly than Jeff Epstein. And I think part of it is because um, more people are willing to talk and share their story. And then also R. Kelly was a lot more public with his indiscretion. Um, I don't think that R. Kelly managed his money very well either um, because he seems like he was quick to just pay people off, spend money lavishly, and um, it seems like he was almost spending ab above his means to keep himself doing what he was doing. Anywho, so I was watching, uh, so, so when I did watch Surviving R. Kelly, the first time it came out, I mean, Black Twitter exploded, and um, I was... Um, I mean, I was, um, so I was about a year younger than Aaliyah, um, when he married, when AJ Nothing But a Number came out, and, um, I... I know this is sacrilege and people don't really want to hear it. Like, I'm a huge fan of Aaliyah, but I'm going to be honest, I didn't like the first album. Um, I think her second album with Missy and Timbaland is just the best album. And then uh, and then she had a nice a couple of singles after that I really, really liked. And then, but that first album I thought was okay. Uh, and... Uh, I was when they I think the best thing is about this show uh, Surviving R. Kelly is that it put everything into a chronological order. I think the things that happened with, with R. Kelly in the media, it became this one incident and then it'll something, then you kind of die down and then another incident will pop up. I'm going to tell you that I did not, I never liked church uh, that you know when uh, I believe I can fly came out I did not like that being sung in church even as a kid I was like this is not a gospel album this is not a gospel song so why are we singing it in church there's a lot of gospel songs that we could sing and not this right and um so when it came out in 2003 I no it was 2005 when the interview happened that uh, I, I mean, I knew then. Was it 2005? 2004. 2004 that the interview dropped, and I was like, he did it. Um, when he did it on BET, and he just couldn't understand when, it was a simple question, do you have young girls as friends? And he was like, what's young? And I was like, I think it's kind of, you know, um, 18, 19, and you're like, um, I was 21 at the time, 
And even though it's three years difference, I was 21 going to grad school. Would I hang out with someone who is a college freshman or even a, uh, a high school senior? No, I'm not hanging out at the high school seniors. And I did in high school date someone who was older than me and not in high school, but but we, you know, I, I can understand, I can understand that, but I thought, I, I, I can understand that there's always a trend of young girls dating older men or older, yeah, somebody over the age of 18. And I get that and I understand it, but what I don't understand, I think it depends on placement in life. Like I can understand if you were in college and you're dating somebody who's a high school senior or something like that. I can, and you've known them for a while and you're kind of, uh, but if you did not know them and I met somebody who I'm a 21 year old and I hang out at high schools to try to pick up a young man, that's where it's like, okay, you're doing too much, but I can understand. I mean, so I think that these things are within context, but I think R. Kelly was just devastating to watch. And I think also because even though I made a, a belief in my head that yes, he's guilty, uh, I still didn't stop listening to Step in the Name of Love. And I think that is the disfortunate, that's the unfortunate part. And I had to take responsibility for myself. Like, this is not cool. And um, with all that being said, the Jeff Epstein one was puzzling because in the first 20 minutes of watching episode one, and it's only four episodes, so it's a quick watch. The first episode for 20 minutes, I kept stopping it because I was like, wait, the way they framed this was that we have no idea how he makes his money. We still don't know how he made it. Even at the end of the series, they're like, we still don't know completely how he makes his money. And then they talk about the different incidents and what happens to people. And then you're like, wait a second. Are you telling me that he's make he's a billionaire and or or close to a billionaire? And he's making his money off of sex trafficking? Is this what you're telling me? And not selling drugs, <laughs> but just sex trafficking. And I was like, oh. But then um, it won't say that, but it will say that he, I mean, this guy did not finish college. He lied about graduating from college. He was able to do quite a bit through lying. He was not fired. Um, and I mean, the level of white privilege when it comes to the fact that he has been involved with not only presidential leader, you know, political, high political leaders, the royal family, uh, companies, moguls, celebrities. And he was only trafficking, I wouldn't say only, but he, he was using only white women. And he trapped them in, I mean he was just like just like R. Kelly he would get them in high school and he would traffic them in the sense that he'd start them off by coming to his house and and asking for a massage and they would tell their other little friends that uh for a massage go find somebody who's willing to give me a massage I'll give you two hundred dollars I'll give her two hundred dollars and I realized that two hundred dollars in high school is a lot of money but I did pause, like, for you to have so much money, $200, you don't think they worth a little bit more than 200 bucks? Like, you can't spare 500 a 1000 I mean, it's just, I think that adds an even higher level of insult. What these girls will be willing to do, what you thought their worth was, is for $200. And, um... For most of them, my understanding of the video uh, is that he didn't 
have them touch his private parts he touched himself and to me i was thinking that he was probably doing this to limit his liability like if he did get caught um because then you can't say that he raped him that you he raped you i think what's most disgusting too is that this his long-term girlfriend was involved and she claimed she wasn't but yeah okay uh and i am still kind of like well why are we not going after her because she molested some of you too um i don't understand why she's not ooh, she's not a victim and uh the way that he was sentenced to jail just let me know like it's not just power and money is one thing too but white privilege is is just written all over his life and i think that and it's, it's pretty clear to that he would not have been charged um if he was in if donald trump was not president donald trump running for president opened the door um for the hashtag me too movement to really take off and then when he became president i mean um it took off and then that also led to another issue that um Donald Trump would also put people who are not uh, specifically involved in, who is specifically not credible, not um, uh, qualified for some of his jobs. And one of them just so happened to have given uh, Jeff Epstein this sweet deal and that is the thing that also led for the takedown and and you know he was charged in New York and um you know we don't know uh the, the judge in New York allowed the victims to have their day in court even though he uh was dead but I must say like I mean the big conspiracy theorist is like you know he didn't he did not kill himself and I don't know if he killed himself or didn't kill himself. I can't attest to that. But I will say um, is that um, um, Harvey Weinstein is really the tip. Uh, I think that Jeffrey... Jeff Epstein was really the underground glacier um, because he really had a lot of other connections that could have been further explored, but we just aren't aware of it because he's now dead. And, I mean, they assume that he's worth 500 and some odd million dollars. I don't believe that it's 500 million and something million dollars. I think that there's more value to him because he wouldn't have been willing to post bail for 500 million dollars. He would have. Um, so I think there's more money and more value to that um, than, than him. Uh... I don't know. Both of them are very, very interesting. They're very, very similar. I highly do recommend watching Jeffrey and Surviving R. Kelly. But it is interesting when in the midst of dealing with, um, you know, Black Lives Matter movements and stuff like that, it is kind of interesting that we're pausing to think of how insignificant these white women who have been terrorized for quite some time for over 30 years has been able to uh, ne not see justice. I think that's the most 
interesting as and and really it's almost like because white privilege really protects a great deal of men white men that unfortunately white women are really paying a huge cost here so because the justice system is willing to deal with black men there is a level even though he terrorized r kelly terrorized nothing but black women we are really really able to see a level of justice for him uh, being held for him and and uh and i just i mean i think that's the the the, the larger tragedy from watching these two um and and the level of victimization that these women had i mean the woman who is an artist she is her art is just gorgeous and the fact that she was never able to be what she could have been out of fear of of this interaction i think is just the larger tragedy but um yeah definitely go watch it and and uh love to hear your views about it um, have a great afternoon and I'll talk with you soon.